So in this new contextual world where you're going to be managing a lot of databases because, well, you're going to keep track of everything about everything, right? All that sensor data, all the social network data that's <coughs> flowing into your systems, you've got to build databases to manage that. Well, that means you have to watch a lot of databases and, well, you know, that can get a qu quickly out of control. Well, ScaleGrid has a way to manage dozens, hundreds of databases and keep it all pretty simple. We're going to hear about it right now. Who are you? So I'm Darshan Rangai Gowda. I'm the, one of the co-founders of ScaleGrid. Before ScaleGrid, I spent about eight years in Microsoft. And I worked on the Windows Server division, where I worked on Hyper-V and Virtual Machine Manager. And after that, I moved to Windows Azure, where I worked on some interesting cross-premise networking problems for Windows Azure. Very cool. So with today's <coughs> cloud computing, whether it be Rackspace Cloud or mm -hmm. Amazon Cloud, why do we need uh, more database management? Isn't it easy just sure. to start up 20 servers on your iPad and sure. put MongoDB yeah. on that? Or? So if you step back and look at the tech the landscape, everybody from a small business to the big enterprise, everybody has databases, everybody has data. And if you look, step back and look at the data, everybody's spending like a significant percentage of their time just keeping their database up. And we at ScaleGrid think it's wrong. Like you should be spending time focusing on your app and not keeping your database up. Yeah. Whether it's a NoSQL database or a SQL database, we will take care of it, of it so that you can focus on your app. So, so tell me what, what you do to, to make it so that I don't have to sure. uh, manage. Give me a use case of uh, okay. somebody somebody's in pain yeah. that you take care of. So I'll give you an example of a Rackspace customer. They are an e-commerce company, and they have a Rackspace de OpenStack deployment on-premise, and they have an e-commerce app that depends on MongoDB. And each instance of this app has like basically requires three shards of MongoDB, each shard with three replicas. That's nine servers each. And they have about 10 deployments of this configuration across the world. So that's about 90 servers. And today they are manually ma hand configuring each of these servers. They are deploying the servers, creating the virtual machine, installing MongoDB, telling it about each other servers. So over a period of five, six months, they've ended up in like configuration hell. Now some servers have some configuration, other servers have other configuration. Their backup and restore scripts are inconsistent. Like you know, they're running backups, but they don't really know if restores work and monitoring is homegrown. And they're just spending a lot of time just keeping their basic database infrastructure up. And this is where, and they came to us and we stepped in and said, hey, your core problem is your app. Work on your app. Let us take care of MongoDB. We'll provision it. And the level of automation that, for example, OpenStack provides, we completely leverage it. One click, we can deploy nine machines. We set up MongoDB. We configure the replicas and shards. Give you the connection string here. Go work on your app. Don't worry about MongoDB. So basically what we have done is we've automated the entire life cycle of database management from them, from provisioning, deprovisioning, scale up, scale down, high availability, disaster recovery, monitoring, backup, and restore. We have basically taken away all the mundane work you've done so you can you know, focus on your app. That sounds awesome. How, how do you get paid in this uh, chain? Sure. So what we do is uh, we help customers deploy MongoDB, and our model is basically we get charged per instance. So as a customer, we are, as an enterprise customer, we have different pricing models as well. So for each instance that you run, you pay a certain amount of money. Very cool. And you know, a lot of people will probably have backups on other uh, uh -huh. regions or other data uh -huh. centers, uh, but have they ever done a restore? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, do you ensure that the restores are tested and everything's yeah. tested? And, and that's one of the really critical pieces of gaps we found in the market, that people are doing backups but they've never really tried their restores. So what we told them, we give them a single one-click way of doing your restore. Hey, here's all your backups. Select one and click restore. And what we'll do is we'll bring up a completely new instance with that data so you can actually query it, make sure it's working, and then throw it away if you don't need it. Very cool. Is it as high a performance as if I had, you know, uh, well, gone to Rackspace dedicated mm -hmm. and had our own racks mm -hmm. of servers and mm -hmm. controlled everything and had a DBA uh -huh. all tune it? Yeah. Is it just yeah. as, as good a quality? Actually, it's, it's better performance because we are very good at what we do. Like, we know exactly how the cloud works. We know what disk to use, how to configure the network, how to align the file system, how to lay MongoDB on that file system, how to configure MongoDB for best performance. So in summary, you will get better performance than if you did it yourself because we know we are experts in the cloud and also the app. Do you watch, uh, you know, if you have a guy who's really good at databases, uh -huh. that's one thing. But uh -huh. if you let me code and uh -huh. put stuff up on the cloud, uh -huh. uh, my skills aren't as good as uh -huh. uh, somebody who knows what they're doing. Uh -huh. Do you watch my code and make sure that I don't get in trouble and that I'm uh -huh. actually writing code that is 
of efficiently calling the yeah. database? So we have uh, some basic performance monitoring. So you can turn that on and it'll tell you like, hey, some of your queries are slow. Uh, maybe you should think about optimizing them. And in general, that's what we recommend. You know, start with your app, get off the ground, get something up and running, you know, get some people using it, and then turn on performance monitoring. It'll tell you, hey, these are all the queries that are running slow. Maybe you should look at it. Do you work with any testing services? Like Sosta tested for the Olympics, and, and they built the whole system, mm -hmm. and then they tested it with a load test before mm -hmm. the Olympics happened mm -hmm. so that they would know the whole system stays up. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, support or work with Sosta or any of these other testing so services? That's a really cool idea. So at this point, we don't, but we've been thinking about it. So we can bring in the whole testing suit into the application itself. So how cool would it be if you could just deploy a cluster, load test it, could give you a score, and then you can say, hey, this is what my deployment will scale to. Very cool. Anything else I need to know is a new, well, you came through the AngelPad uh -huh. uh, incubator. What's, uh -huh. What was that like, and, and how? Uh -huh. what, what did you get out of that program? You know, I think AngelPad has been like a completely awesome experience, you know, working with a seasoned advisor like Thomas, like early in the stage of a startup. Just working with this network and the support crew, it just makes a big difference to a small startup like us, you know? Because as engineers, we tend to focus on the product more, but Thomas has been pushing us to think more holistically about it as a business, about marketing, about sales. And just the aspect of being in a single room with 12 other like very smart companies, you just learn so much. Uh, I think it's been a great experience for us. What are, since you're working probably with a lot of startups because you're a startup yourself uh -huh. and you're here in San Francisco and uh -huh. you, you know that's uh -huh. what happens on the street. Uh -huh. What trends are you seeing happen in database? Mm -hmm. How are people yeah. building companies today? Are, yeah. are they starting with MySQL and then switching yeah. to something else, or are they just yeah. starting with Cassandra or with yeah. a new new kind of database? I think there's, we are seeing some very interesting trends. And one of the things I see by default is the web companies. They're all starting with NoSQL by default. You know, I think there's like a threshold has been reached where somebody writes like or somebody builds a web company. By default, it's NoSQL, and uh, you'll have to convince them to use MySQL. And I think the NoSQL companies have done a really good job of like you know of advocating the benefits and the advantages of it. And I think this is just the beginning, and we are seeing more and more adoption for NoSQL technologies. Very cool. Thanks for coming in. Where do I learn more about your company? Yeah, you can go to scalegrid.net and you can learn all about us. Very cool. Thank you Thank so you. much.